Think you know some things about electricity and power consumption? Well, we just might be able to prove you wrong on a few things. This presentation was prepared by Steve Hudson, Vice President of Hardware Engineering here at Powermetrics in Knoxville, Tennessee. There's a few ideas floating around out there that may or may not be based on the evidence. Today, we're going to look into one of these. Are green light bulbs better than incandescent bulbs? Let's roll up our sleeves and see if it's true. Myth number one. Are green light bulbs really better? You would certainly think so, considering how much they're talked about in the news and how many utility companies pass out free or reduced cost green lighting. So, what is a green light bulb? It can be defined as any new light bulb technology that gives out the same amount of light while consuming less power compared to its incandescent equivalent. The idea may not have started in Congress, but it was definitely made stronger by the Energy Independence and Security Act passed in 2007. This legislation set in motion a wave of changes in the electricity marketplace as well as in the manufacturing of light bulbs. So, let's run a little experiment to see if this myth is even true. First, we need to set up some conditions and parameters. We must, for example, define better. Your idea of better may be slightly different than your neighbor's idea of better. We're going to collect some data and then finally evaluate the outcome based on the evidence. So let's get started. When we ask consumers what is important to them, they typically say that light output, color, power consumption, reliability, and cost are what they look for to evaluate whether a light bulb is a good deal. By consumers, we mean anyone who purchases light bulbs, which is pretty much everyone. The utility company, however, might say that power consumption, power quality, and the influence these bulbs have on the electrical grid are what they look at most closely. So let's take a look at the issue from the consumer's perspective first and evaluate each type of light bulb against each other. To begin our experiment, we purchased three different light bulb technologies whose light output was 60 watt equivalent. When we look at the light output measurements, it seems like the CFL bulb wins. However, there's so little difference, we could call them equivalent. Color is a personal preference, so for the sake of this particular experiment, we're going to pass on making a judgment call. Closely related to energy cost is power consumption. CFL and LED bulbs are hands down winners in this category. Annual energy costs reveal the LED bulb to be the clear winner here. How long will a bulb last? Well, if you're paying the high price of an LED bulb, you're probably happy to know that investment will last you more than 18 years on average. You can't beat the cost of a CFL bulb at under a dollar a piece. Total cost per year reveals the LED to be the winner by a slim margin over the CFL. Cost per year is defined as the annual energy cost plus the cost of the bulb divided by its lifespan. But when we look at all the data together and highlight the winning characteristics, it looks like LED bulbs are the winners in this contest for the consumer's vote but not so fast. There's more to the story. Harmonics are the rest of the story, and as it turns out, this concept changes the game a little bit. But what are harmonics? Well, as you may already know, harmonics is the repetitive contamination of the voltage or current waveform. It's generated by nonlinear loads and are a reflection of the nonlinear load on a distribution system with finite impedance. But to put it more simply, a linear system has a nice clean sine wave voltage going in and also a nice clean sine wave current coming out. But a nonlinear system, it has a nice clean sine wave going in, but a crooked and jagged one coming out on the current side. That is to say, harmonics produce a variety of infrastructural problems, cause losses within the power system, and can result in metering errors and disputes which ultimately lead to a loss of revenue for the utility. High levels of harmonics in a system cause a reduction of efficiency due to heat loss, which then leads to premature equipment failure. So let's take a look at a fundamental sine wave in the United States with a frequency of 60 Hertz. Hmm, pretty clean. Now let's add a fifth harmonic wave, shown here in pink. 5 times 60 Hertz equals 300 Hertz. Basically, 
we just added a 300 Hz signal to the system. When you mix the two together in the same distribution system, you get a dirty waveform like the one here in pale blue. The problem is that mechanical meters really don't handle harmonics well at all. In fact, research shows that it leads to as much as an 80% error rate as the harmonics level go up. Solid state meters do a better job at handling harmonics depending on the sampling rate and VAR calculation used, however, most utilities still have a significant number of mechanical meters in the field. To make matters a little bit worse, there currently isn't a standard for VAR and VA harmonic measurements. Meter manufacturers are using different methods and definitions to deal with the problem, and most meter manufacturers give the user several choices for how to handle harmonics, which creates the potential for a variety of answers to the same mathematical problem. This means there can be as much as a 50% difference in meter measurements depending on the harmonic situation at a given meter site. And by the way, CTs and PTs also struggle with harmonics. So let's look at the harmonics each type of bulb generates. Before we show some real examples of harmonics and light bulbs, however, we do need to define an important concept. Total harmonic distortion, or THD, is simply a measure of the amount of harmonics in a system. When we test the incandescent bulb with the PowerMaster 3 series, we can see that we can get a pretty clean sine wave for voltage going in and current coming back out. You may also note that reactive power is practically non-existent and the total harmonic distortion is very low at 1.5%. But when we test the compact fluorescent bulb with the PowerMaster 3 series, we now get a pretty clean voltage going in, but the current coming out is jagged and full of harmonic distortion. In fact, the total harmonic distortion went up from 1.5% in the incandescent bulb to 88% in the CFL bulb, and notice the reactive power jumped up from almost no VARs to 6 VARs. Now take a look at the LED bulb. More harmonic distortion. In fact, a lot more. We now measure 111% total harmonic distortion, which is a 23% increase over the CFL bulb, and almost 110% increase over the incandescent bulb, and look at the VARs we still have a significant amount of reactive power at 4 VARs. But here's the kicker. We measure residential service in watt hours, but the meters we use to measure consumption don't measure the VARs consumed by green bulbs. Therefore, utility companies are losing money on each and every green bulb being used by consumers. So just how many of these bulbs do you think are in your system? So who wins? Well, the consumer probably enjoys all the savings, but we doubt the utility companies are okay with all the expense. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for future videos where we look into the question of whether true three phase testing is the only way to go, and whether solid wires are better than stranded ones in metering applications. Let us know if you have a myth you'd like our engineers to bust. We love a good challenge, so send us an email or a comment we'll jump right on it. We always love hearing from you. If you have any questions, comments, or stories to share, let us know by commenting below or by starting a conversation on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter. Sign up for our newsletter to receive updates when we post new training materials on our website at www.powermetrics.com.